All right, you've got your calendar for office hours. Now you need to create the events. There's a couple of ways that you can do that that will make your life easier. So I'm going to click on tomorrow. And this is going to pop up and let me start creating my appointment. I want to be able to see this full screen and have a couple more options that don't show up here in miniature. So I'm going to go down to more options. That's going to bring me full screen. It's all the same information plus a couple of things that we couldn't see before. So I'm going to put my name in this and call it office hours so that people know what they're getting invited to. Now, I don't have office hours all day tomorrow. I just have them from 10 to 1030. Actually, let's say 1045. That gives me a couple of minutes there at the end to go check my mail or make some copies or go to the bathroom or whatever. But here's my chunk of time. My planning period is basically third hour it starts right around 10 o'clock. So this works for me. I, the day is fine. The time zone is automatic. Here where it says does not repeat, I'm going to use this custom feature because this one does repeat. Say I find out tomorrow that I've got a student who's going to be out for the next seven days like our quarantine kids are. I don't need it to be daily or weekly or every fourth Tuesday or any of the stuff, but it would be nice if it would just automatically populate this link at 10 o'clock for the next seven days for the student. You can do that with custom. Notice the possibilities. You can set what days it's going to repeat on. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, because we're four-day week school. It ends on never. That'll mean that you have those for the rest of the semester, which is overkill for everybody. I don't just want it on and on to a certain day. I want it after so many occurrences. And like I said, like we found out today, that's seven days. That's seven class days. So when I set this, it's automatically going to make seven appointments across these four days of the week for this event. I'll say done. We're going to see that show up on the calendar. I also want to be sure as I look down the options that I add the Google Meet video conference link. This is what you and the student are going to click on. It's what you're going to click on to get it to go live and what the student's going to click on on their end to join that meet. I don't need to add a location or you can add notifications so that 10 minutes or 20 minutes or hours ahead of time you will get notified on your device and on your account that you have this appointment coming up, which is really handy. If we get busy doing other things, this notification might save you from being late to the thing or missing it all together. It's on the right calendar. It's going to show me it's busy. Down here, I can add the agenda. If I have very specific things in this meeting that I need to go over, you can add a link to resources that might help that student. You can put in a bulleted list. You can just add a note. This is just hoping to touch base and whatever else you needed to say. Hope to see you there. Let me know if you need me, whatever. So there's the basics of setting up your recurring event and the days and your office hours and notifications and so on and so forth. So there's the meat of creating that event. Next, we'll add guests and look at the options for that and see what that looks like. Here's creating the event.